That's no moon. That's a space station. I think most of you have probably figured out based on the shirts that I choose to wear in like half these videos, that I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. So much so that I'm going to completely break the mold of this series and talk about something that isn't video game related. In this episode of the Diet Chip Tide Show Light, I'm going to be ranking every single Star Wars movie and TV show based on my own personal preference. That is the only criteria. And just as a quick disclaimer, this video is being recorded on the 21st of January. I know there's a bunch of new Star Wars stuff coming down the pipe. I don't think any of it is set to release before this video goes out, but on the off chance it does, uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Also, I know I kind of have a habit of making these diet episodes not as light as they could be, so this time I'm going to try and be as brief as I possibly can. Number 15, Rebels. I've never seen it, so, like, I couldn't really say. What's the deal with those super thin lightsabers, though? What, what's up with that? Number 14, The Clone Wars. The movie. The movie. Just the movie. Don't, don't worry. Oh, I got you there, though. I got you for a second, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Seriously, Baby Jabba sucks, though. Number 13, Rise of Skywalker. <sighs> Why? Number 12, Attack of the Clones. Seriously, what even happens in this movie? I know I've seen it several times. There's the, the Coliseum bit at the end, that's pretty fun. How is this movie over two hours? Number 14, The Phantom Menace. There's actually some pretty cool stuff in here. I mean, come on, Darth Maul, Duel of Fates, and it gave us that one pod racing level from Lego Star Wars. It also uh, gave us, you know, Spinning. That's a, that's a cool trick, I guess. Also low-key, midichlorians, not that bad. We always knew the Force was genetic. Number 10, The Last Jedi. When it first came out, I actually really liked it. And then Rise of Skywalker happened and just by association, yeah. Also, they did Poe and Finn super dirty in this one. Number nine, Solo. It's fun, I guess, Probably a little unnecessary, but when I went to see it in the theater, there were two dudes sitting behind me who were super into it, and they lost their minds at every single little plot twist, and it was real funny. Under any other circumstances, I would say talking in the movie theater, absolutely not. But those two dudes, you're alright. Number 8, Revenge of the Sith. Despite the dialogue's best efforts, this one's actually pretty good. Number 7, The Force Awakens. Literally just A New Hope 2. So like, I can't say it's bad, because A New Hope is really good, but uh, it's nothing new. Number six, The Clone Wars, the TV show. Started off a little shaky for me, and a lot of the villains aren't great, but it gets real good. Also, any episode that's just like a bunch of clones that maybe you've never met before, maybe you'll never meet again, going off, doing something, those are the best episodes by far. Don't at me. Also, those last four episodes, though? Number five, Return of the Jedi. Rise of Skywalker, take notes. It has a plot that makes any sort of sense at all whatsoever. It has a villain that doesn't suck, and it's literally the same exact villain. How did you mess that up? And it's got an ending that's equal parts emotional and satisfying. Also, I just unironically really love the Ewoks. Number four, Rogue One. A lot of people don't like this movie. And a lot of people apparently also have really bad tastes in movies because this one freaking rocks. Sure, the first half is a little slow, I guess. But the second half is Star Wars firing on all cylinders and it rules. Also, side note, I know literally this whole movie was created so people would stop complaining about the one exhaust port on the Death Star, but like, you guys know what exhaust is, right? Like, if you shot a proton torpedo up the tailpipe of your car, yeah, it's gonna blow up. The fact that an entire moon-sized space station right back there has one exhaust port about yay big, that's not a weakness. That is an engineering miracle. Also, Rogue One is really good. Number three, The Mandalorian. 
Honestly, without nostalgia or anything, this one should probably be number one. And no, it's not just because Baby Yoda is the cutest freaking thing in the entire galaxy, but because the story being told is top notch. Mando is one of, if not the most interesting and well-developed characters in the entire franchise. No spoilers, but it's freaking great. Also, Baby Yoda though? Number two, The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, come on, you knew these had to be the top two, and honestly, I go back and forth every day as to which one I actually like better, they're both just that good. But, I mean, come on, the Battle of Hoth, uh, Yoda, Bespin, Lando and Lobot, uh, the greatest lightsaber duel the franchise has maybe ever produced, the greatest twist in cinema history, Lobot! I gotta stop talking about this or before I move it to number one, because that's about to happen real soon. Number one, A New Hope. I know, I know, it's cliche, but probably my favorite movie of all time, except maybe Empire Strikes Back. There is literally not a single situation in which someone could ask me, hey, you want to go watch A New Hope? And my answer would be no. I could be halfway through A New Hope and I'd be like, you know what? Yeah, I'll start over so I can watch the first half of it. Yep. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go watch A New Hope literally right now. See you guys.